Okay, here we are at Bud Records in Burbank, California with Jim Tudor, one of the legendary radio people of yesteryear, with a story about the late, great Eddie Cochran. Okay. Is this On one of my shows on Armed Forces Radio, heard all over 29 countries, wow. I wanted to interview Sharon Sheely, who wrote Poor Little Fool for Ricky Nelson. That's right. First woman to write a song, teenage woman, that a song became number one. So, I tried to contact her and I was told that she didn't want to do any interviews. And uh, she turned down Rolling Stone, I heard, at that time. What year is it, Jim? This is about 19... I would say 82. Oh, uh, she, she died a couple years ago. Yeah, she died um, in the 90s, in the early maybe? In the 90s, yeah. Right. 82 or so, I'm not really sure. The early 90s. Anyway, so I wrote a letter to BMI, Broadcast Music Incorporated, which uh, represents music publishers and writers. And I knew she was a BMI writer, so I wrote a nice letter saying how much I liked the song that she wrote for Eddie called Cherish Memories. Right. And I told her about how I met Eddie back in 59, he was touring on the record Something Else. And I saw him at the St. Paul Brown Ball. Eddie, of course, had Summertime Blues, sitting in the sure. Come on, everybody. Anyway, I wrote this letter, put my phone number in the letter, said, Call me. I'd love to do an interview with you. And she called. When she said, I was so. The letter was such a beautiful letter, very sensitive, and she says, as you know, I went with Eddie, we were going to get married, and we right. had the accident, and Exactly, died. 1960. So she said, I said, well, could you do an interview? I'll pick out the tunes, you look them over, and if they're okay, fine, we'll go with it. Armed Forces Radio will meet in McCadden Avenue in Hollywood, and um, she said, sure, I'll do it. I went over the tunes on, on the phone that we'd play. And I set up a date. It'll be the next following week. It was a Tuesday afternoon. So she um, Tuesday arrived. She arrived on time. She had a fellow with her, kind of a young guy who was I think he was a lead guitar player in a band. And uh, she was uh, trying to I think uh, maybe do some some work in clubs and what have you. We sat down. We did the interview, and I had the engineer put on an extra tape. So I could have it, and um, the interview went great. And as you know, Sharon wrote for Little Fool, and um, she wrote the tune. And it was like an assignment for English in high, in high school. Okay, oh, really poem, interesting. And, and the, teacher, wow. the teacher turned it down and said that's not. No her. kidding. It's, yeah. It's wow. Gabra, D. R. Come on. She took the tune, and she. Uh, she added a little bit of music to it and had a little demo tape and she said, I'm going to have Ricky Nelson record this. So she drives over to the, where the Nelsons lived in Hollywood, drives up on their driveway, stops, and Ozzy comes up out of the house and says, what's the matter? Is something wrong? She says, gee, I turned in this driveway by mistake and, you know, I, I don't know what I... I, mean, I, I love it. And, and then all of a sudden Ricky comes out. And Rick was um, rehearsing at the time in the house with James Burton and, uh, sure. and everybody. And uh, she says, I got a song here that I think um, you might be interested in. It's, I wrote it for Elvis, and uh, instead of having Elvis do it, I'd rather have Rick listen to it and see if he likes it. And so Ozzy turns to Ricky and says, well, what do you think? And he takes the tape and he hands it to Ricky. And Ricky says, well, we'll listen to it. And Sharon says, well, okay, here's my phone number. Let me know. So anyway, she drives away. Ricky takes it into James Burton. They look at it for a while. Burton says, yeah, not bad. And he says, let's see, try the chords here. It was, it was, she had a demo note. The music was kind of up-tempo, more up-tempo. Okay, sure. So Burton slows it down. B okay, sure. At C, A minor, F, G. Sure, sure, okay. sure. They work it out, and it kind of fits into the rehearsal. And then when Ricky is about to record another album, they decide to put it on the album. Okay. Put it on the album, they release it, and the album gets played, and that song gets picked up by the DJs. Okay. And they start playing Full Little Fool, and they release it as a single, and within a month or so, it was number one on Billboard. Wow. In June or so, 1958. Number one song for her. Then she went on to write songs with, with Eddie. Right. Most of the ballads you see on the flip side of your show sure. says Cochran and uh, Sheely. Or Capehart.
Capehart. Right, Jerry Capehart. Capehart was Jerry Capehart was his manager. Exactly, Jerry Capehart. Okay, here's the okay. Back to the Eddie Cochran story. Um, interviews done. Sharon says to me, "Do you think I could have a copy of the interview?" I said, "Sure." I, what I'll do is. I'll make a copy for you, have the engineer do it, and I'll bring it to your place. I'll call you in North Hollywood and I'll drop it off on my, on my way home to Ohio. This is fine. The following week, I'm doing my show. I think I had, uh, I don't know if I had Rick Nelson in that time, but I had Bo Diddley or somebody like that. Okay. Get a copy of tape for her. Back then, see, we had, um, I, think we, I think I made a cassette for her okay. in the studio. Call her up. She said, Joe, in North Hollywood, just get off the freeway. I'm in Hollywood. She's in North Hollywood. Okay. And easy directions. So I, I went over. It was about 7 o'clock at night. She says, come on in. Sit down. She said, oh, thanks for the tape. And I said, yeah, it turned out really good. We had only a few edits on it. Okay. We're sitting in her kitchen. And she said, Jim, before you got over here, Paul McCartney just called me from England. He wants to know if we have any interviews with Eddie Cochran. And I said, wow. isn't that funny? And she says, yeah, but, but I'm not giving him this interview. He says, well, this is, I'm going to keep it. And I'm, she's saying, how did you know Eddie? And I just told my man, but I said, Eddie was tremendously talented, as we both know. Of course. She said, we went together. We were going to get married. We were in England of on course. the way back. Gene Vincent was with us. We right. Jackson, you know, right. Eddie held my head. Of course. So hit the curb. He did. Died. So she said, Eddie's going to show us a sign tonight while you're here that he appreciates Come on. what you did for him. I said, what do you mean? Eddie does these things for me. He's been doing it for me. Wow. So we're sitting talking in the kitchen. It's getting late, 8.30 at night. We're talking, reminiscing all about rock and roll. And sure. And Sharon wrote songs with Jackie DeShannon. Of course, of course, of course. Of course. Yes, yes. He's a great imposter for the Cleveland. Of course. All of a sudden, as we're talking, the lights in the kitchen start to flicker. Oh, come on. And I go, what is that, Sharon? She said, you told me, see? It's Eddie. <laughs> and I laughed. Wow. And I said, Light stop. And she said, Eddie's going to show you a couple more signs. She said, he had a great sense of humor, and you'll find out tonight when you leave. I said, okay, well, I said, goodbye, Sharon. I go to my car. The car's parked about half a block up from her house. I open my door, put the key in the ignition, and all of a sudden it keeps going around and around and around. Come on. It doesn't, it doesn't connect. Wow. What the hell is this? I never had this end. I keep doing it. Take the key out of the ignition. Try it again, same thing. It just spins. Wow. Take it out and go back to Sharon's house. I said, Sharon, I can't get I gotta call the auto club. She says, Don't worry about it. Go back again, it'll work this time. I said, What do you mean? She just drove. So I go, boom, put it in, shh, works. Come on. Drive all the way back to Ohio, get home about two, three in the morning, maybe midnight, so I don't know. My wife's sleeping, the kids are sleeping. Go in the house. I don't know if my wife had some food in the refrigerator for one of Then, wake up in the morning, my tire's flat. Come on. At the driveway. I said, oh God, what am I going to do now? So I call the guy at the service station. He comes up, takes my spare out, puts, puts, takes the tire out. I go with him down to the service station. Pumps it up. He said, we'll check to see if, we put, see if any bubbles come out of the hole. He said, I don't see a hole. Pumps it up. He said, Jim, I don't see anything wrong with this tire. There's no, no bubbles coming up. It doesn't seem like there's a hole in it. I said, it was flat. He said, yeah, I saw it was flat. But it, so he puts that tire. I said, put it back on what it was before. Takes the spare off. It's the old one. You know, on. And for the next eight months, it was fine. So there, there was really a hole in it. That was, I called Sharon and told her about the tire, and I told her about the key, and it was okay, and she said, yeah, no, she said, but that was Eddie. And she said, let me tell you a story. I was going with a guy here in North Hollywood, and I wanted to break up with him, and he was causing a hassle for me. I told him to stay out of my life, and uh, he kept harassing me, calling me on the phone, coming around the house. I was one, in, in Sunset, in a meeting, Sunset Strip, and all of a sudden, this guy told me, he went to my house, and he kept knocking on the door, and the door opens, and there's a guy in my house telling him to get the hell out of Sharon's life. Come on. And um, I said, 
but what did the guy look like? Sure, said the guy was in the top. Of the Come on! Is that really blowing your mind. This is this wow. She oh, says oh, it oh, came oh. out. It was Eddie. Had the hair and the smile. Come on! I said that. Well, I thought Eddie Cochran died. She said no, it was Eddie. So that's my story with Sharon, Eddie, and myself. Incredible, that's Jim. Incredible. That made my week, <laughs> made my year, made my whole visit with Steve and you. I appreciate it. Thank you, okay. sir.